Okay. Welcome everyone. All zero of you at this point. So just so you know, Olivia is not here. It's just me. And uh, it's hard to draw and read questions at the same time, especially because the computer is kind of far away. So I don't know that I'll be able to read or take many questions. But we can definitely do a demo. That much I can do for sure. Uh, okay, let me get my reference ready here, which I probably should have done. In the meantime, while I'm getting my reference set up, you guys can look at this. This is a demo I just shot. Uh, for the fundamental head class and we've got another demo that I just shot for the figure drawing class looks like this oh shoot you know what may have done this wrong Uh, let's see here real quick. Live streams. Dang. Okay, hang on. I don't have the, the reference on my laptop, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to move it over there real quick. My apologies. There we go. Okay, I should be able to get it over here now. There it is, okay. Now I can see the reference, which is good. It's a good start. So this is something I drew yesterday. Uh, just a quick, oh shoot, a uh, quick figure drawing demo and then we've got from earlier today, a sorrow head demo, roughly. Today we're just going to do a regular head demo. Probably not even the whole thing. To be honest, I don't have a ton of time right now and uh, Olivia's not here, so I'm just going to demo a quick head. Sorry, I got a bunch of stuff in the way. There we go. Okay, now I'm ready for real this time. Let's draw a head. So as usual, we want to start with the big shape of the head. Kind of work our ways from big shapes down to smaller shapes. And so we'll start just kind of like with a general uh, cranial mass type shape, which is going to look something like this. Basically just an oval. Nothing too complicated. Simple oval type shape. You know, and then from there, we need to turn this into the big shape of the head, right? So we're going to kind of pull the side plane of the head over here off of there. Let's see if we can kind of find a shape that kind of matches her head type, which I think is going to come out sort of like that. This part's going to wrap down and then kind of follow the jaw line, right? So here we're trying to follow the angle of the jaw kind of right in through there, and then it's going to connect to the chin right there. Yeah, not bad. That's off to a decent start. Clean up our construction lines. There we go, big shape of the head. Next up, we're gonna have kind of a separation for the back of the jaw and the ear. And her ear tilts back pretty far, right? So it's gonna have a pretty extreme tilt to it kind of that way, right? And then her ear kind of sits back in here somewhere. I'm not gonna draw too much right now, just a simple oval is enough. 
right? Because the more complex we make things, the more we're going to not want to change them when they're wrong. And we need to be willing to change things, right? So we want to keep things very simple right now. Uh, from the center line, it's going to come up from the chin. That's starting to look pretty good, right? We're starting to get things broken down. Uh, her hairline sits kind of low on her forehead a little bit, right? So forehead's coming up. Hairline, I would say, is probably about here. Right, because it's kind of sitting like right on that change in plane, right about in there. And then from there, we can come in and take this space and break that into equal thirds, is the idea. All right, so we'll come in here and see if we can find. Nice equal thirds. I'm just taking my best guess right now. Been doing this a while, so sometimes I guess pretty accurately, other times not so much. But I'm just gonna guess that I'm gonna come in here and measure. And that seems pretty close. Close enough. I think I'm gonna go with it. I got lucky that time. Got lucky and didn't have to make any adjustments. What's that say? Luis, it says Luis. Luis, welcome. Uh, Olivia's not here, actually. It's just me, and I'm not even sure anybody else is watching. So it might just be us right now, but that's okay. Okay, so essentially we took our big shape of the head, right, and we're breaking it down into smaller and smaller chunks, right? So what I'm gonna look for next, before I do this, is kind of where that separation between the front and the side plane of the head is gonna sit. Probably somewhere right around there. So we get front plane and then side plane kind of over here, right? And then we'll have kind of like the, that circle that you can see sometimes for the side plane of the head over here. It's starting to look pretty good, right? That's a pretty decent three-dimensional type shape. And now we can come in here and start breaking it down even farther, right? And start figuring out like, okay, what about her glabella, right? Kind of sits right about in here, right? The inside of this other eye socket is going to kind of be right back in here, right? Kind of like that. Look for the shape of the brow. In her case, it's pretty straight for a little bit. It's pretty straight, and then it kind of wraps around this corner here, and then kind of cuts back in a little bit. All right, we get that kind of shape for the eye socket. Same thing over here, does this, and then kind of comes and wraps kind of down this way a little bit. That's not bad. Right now, keep in mind, this part is kind of poking out a little bit in order to get the brow bone sticking out. On this side, we have this part cutting in, down, back up around that way. And then when I look for this other eye socket, I'm going to do that and the nose at the same time because uh, they relate to each other very closely, right? Like we have to make sure that this nose lines up in a way that allows this far eye socket to work properly. I can already tell there's kind of too much space right here, right? So we can probably pull this in back, back in a little bit. Was a little more accurate, although it's pretty similar. It's looking pretty good. Uh, and then this, of course, connects to cheekbone, kind of right out here. We get the ball of the nose right out here.
right about like that also I don't know if anybody's here or not but uh, oh, someone wrote hi and another person wrote hello from Georgia hello from California can't read the questions from this far away uh, so Olivia is not here. She usually reads all the questions, and uh, it's just me right now. I don't know that I can read questions and draw at the same time. Anyway, her cheekbone kind of wraps out around this way, and then kind of drops down, and then kind of back in a little bit. Something kind of like that. Right, we need to figure out kind of where the nostril is going to sit back here. All right, for her nose, kind of like right around there. She has a fairly narrow nose shape. And then remember, we kind of duplicate this line, right? Draw a line parallel to that. That kind of shows where the separation between the side plane of the nose and the cheek sits, and we kind of run right up through that area. And that should roughly lead us back to where the tear duct is going to sit right up in here. All right, also, might be good to get the rest of this eye socket on here. All right. Maybe something like that. Maybe even a little bit lower. Right from there, we're going to have this bottom third and break that into thirds, right? So from the nose line to the chin, we're going to break that space into equal thirds. And that's going to help us figure out exactly where to place the mouth. Right, taking the time to measure and make sure this is working properly. It seems pretty good, right? So there's our thirds, and then we have to consider the tooth cylinder, right? So remember, the tooth cylinder pushes the mouth forward and uh, basically pushes it outward this way, right, like that. And then we get the chin kind of sticking out as well. Right, so now the lips are going to be designed kind of off of this new center line right here. And we'll see how that goes. What does that say? One question. How do you determine the height of the socket for that particular model? Uh, depends on what you mean the height. Like if you're talking about this line down here, I'm just guessing. Because to be honest, it's not that important. What's important is that it looks kind of cool just in case we have to stop drawing. Uh, the general rule, I would say, is that this goes roughly at the halfway point between the brow line and the nose line, which I don't know if that's exactly right here. No, it's pretty close. Um, but what I'm really doing more is, is focusing on what's going on up here, because this is really important. And then this stuff down here doesn't really end up in the finished drawing quite so much, so exactly where this goes is a little bit less important, I would say. It's important in the sense that we want to be in the habit of drawing complete shapes, right? We want to be in the habit of drawing in a way where if we have to stop at some point, then it'll work on its own as a drawing, right? And that's really kind of why I complete these things as much as I do, is uh, just to have nice complete shapes in there. Okay, so I don't know if that answers your question or not. Uh, Olivia is not here, so I'm kind of on my own for questions. So this is mostly just going to be a demo. I don't think I'm going to be able to read questions a lot and draw at the same time. Okay, so the mouth, remember, is being pushed forward by the tooth cylinder. So it's going to come out right about here and here. over this way, pops back up a little bit, and 
to get a little bit of the node. Same thing here, we get a little bit of lip. All right, we get the tubercle underneath here. All right, bottom lip kind of presses up against here. All right, bottom lip is going to kind of come out from here. And then we get a little bit of that shadow down here. The lips sit, I don't know, kind of like that. It's not perfect, but I think it'll do as a placeholder for right now. All right, kind of get rid of our construction lines as we go, and then that kind of lets us put in things like the filtrum. Right, kind of sitting right up in here. It's not bad. Our chin is going to sit right down here. Right, we'll get some of that cheekbone rhythm, that Riley rhythm that kind of runs out this way. I think might be helpful. quick rhythm in there. Okay, so for these eye sockets, right, I'm going to come in here and start looking for where the actual opening of the eye socket is up underneath here. And it's basically back up under here. You know, so our eyes are going to sit this height, which is tough because her eyes sit at like an angle. So if we're looking for the height of the tear duct, I think it's going to be a little bit lower. Like around here. And then the corner of the eye is going to sit a little bit higher. Like about up there. Okay, so let's get some eyebrows on here and maybe some hair might be good. Remember, eyebrows sit right on our brow line, which is right here, right? And right where the eyebrows meet in the center of the forehead is where that line runs right across here. She has tough eyebrow shapes. They kind of have like, kind of like this like thicker part and then like a thinner part. I'm just trying to capture her eyebrow shape as best I can. I mean, there's no, no real easy way to do it. Other than to just practice drawing a ton of eyebrows. Yeah, it sits kind of like that. Right, same thing over here. We get kind of like this like thicker section. And then it's going to wrap out around the brow. You know, show it really kind of like overlapping and going around the brow bone, right? Like it's going and wrapping around the other side.
not bad, right? We can add a little bit of a hairline on here, I think. So we can kind of look for, right, where her hairline sits about here. And then it kind of drops down a little bit. And it kind of cuts back this way. Keeping these lines nice and soft, right? We don't want hard edges right on the hairline, right? So I'm keeping these marks very soft so we can turn it into hair later or more hair like make it more hair like later All right kind of runs back up behind her ear it's not bad i think that's working pretty well overall i would give it be a B. Not bad. I think that's looking okay. You know, now, how much of the hair do we want to put on there? I don't know. I don't know that we have time to draw that much hair, but it might be good to get a little bit of her neck on there, which is tricky because she's looking back towards us. So like what's really happening is sternocleidomastoid is getting pulled this direction. And on this part of her neck, it's kind of like rounded this way, but then kind of popping back out there. And then here we have the trapezius kind of pushing out that direction. All right, a little bit of shoulder maybe, a little bit of collarbone. All right, just make sure to show that like her neck is twisted and kind of looking back towards us a bit. And then of course that creates like some compression. Kind of back up in here. I think that's enough neck for right now. Definitely. So let's get a hair shape before I do too much more. Cause I don't know if I wanna go back and work on that neck more later. Oh, also, I'm gonna open this delicious Coca-Cola I have sitting here. And I'm gonna drink it. Yum. Okay, so hair shape, right? Her hair is wrapping all the way around the other side of her head here. So it's actually starting like here, right? And kind of coming up this direction then kind of back this way. We have a part in her hair right up around in here. All right, just a little bit of hair indication just so we know that there's something going on here. And uh, what's tough here now is she has like all this hair up here, right? So we have to decide like how much of that do we really want to draw? Um, you know, if I had a ton of time, we would draw a lot of it. And uh, better be vanilla Coke. Is that, is that Alex? Sorry, Olivia is not here. So I have to read my own questions and they're very far away. No, it is, it is not vanilla Coke. I hate to disappoint. This is just Coca-Cola classic is the best one by far although i will say vanilla coke's pretty good too the only ones i don't like are the diet ones i prefer real sugar in my my coca-cola okay so back to our hair shape right so we just got to get like a big shape on here that reads reasonably well 
It's coming up this way, kind of dropping back down this way, picking up some kind of little strands down here, right? A little bit of chaos. And then things get interesting, right? Up in this area, we start getting up into this big mass of hair up here. We've got to kind of figure out what do we do? We could just leave it like this. This doesn't look too bad. Or we could just put the big shape in here, which I think is what I'm going to do. And then later, if we have time, we can go in and draw it. But to be honest, I'm not going to have time. It's just going to remain unfinished. Kind of sits like way up there. And uh, we can add a couple things to it real quick just to show that there's some sort of hair-like thing going on here. Just a couple little directional strokes so people understand that this is hair. Okay, that didn't look great. But that's enough, I think. I don't I don't want to get into drawing all that hair right now. It's going to take forever. It's going to take forever, and I don't think it'll be any fun to watch. But that's where it would go. <clears throat> okay, so back to the head. Oh, let's see. People wrote more stuff. Did I leave a note of cheers? Yes. It is me. It is Alex. And well. Appreciate that, Alex. I hope you're doing well as well. And, uh... Yeah, although Olivia is not here to read questions, so this is a very confusing live stream. Uh, but let's draw some eyes, right? So let's go in here and see if we can add these eyes in here. And then we also need, like, some nostrils. That might be good. In fact, I might draw that part first. I don't know why. I always put the eyes off until last. It's probably just a bad habit. Don't know that I would recommend it. A little bit of a nostril shape in here. And then some eyes. Oh, Faith says hi. Hello, Faith. And Alex, both. Glad you can make it. I didn't know anybody was going to watch this live stream. It's cool some people showed up. It's weird because Olivia's not here, so I feel like it's just me sitting alone in a room all by myself. But we're going to draw some eyes, right? So the eyes are going to come up this direction, and they're going to basically wrap over this way, but in a way where they end... higher than where they started, right? Like the tear duct is sitting lower than the corner of the eye. So the entire eye is like tilted to draw her eye specifically. You know, so then our lower lid is kind of wrapping down around this way. And kind of back up over to tear duct sitting about like that and it looks strange right now because there's you know a bunch of stuff missing but if we start adding more stuff and looking for say the top plane of the lid top plane of the lower lid kind of down around in here Lower lid itself, kind of sitting down around here. Uh, we get uh, some of the ball of the eye showing in here. 
And then of course the lid kind of tucks up underneath that fold up above it. And the lid is, this is tough because it's not going right up under the brow bone. There's a fat pad here. And so it's kind of tucking up under that fat pad as opposed to up under the brow bone. Wasn't a good line. Let's try that again. Yeah, it'll sit in there, something like that. Right? Now we need to get this far eye is also tough. Someone wrote this demo is great. That's cool. Appreciate that. Right? So the far eye is always tough. It's always easy to draw one eye, and then when you go to draw the other one, it's like, oh my gosh, they don't match. That's usually what happens. But uh, fortunately, I've been doing this long enough that they usually turn out okay. But you just have to be really familiar with how these eye shapes work is really what it comes down to. You know, and really understand kind of how they, everything connects. And, uh, it goes over the tear duct that way. Then we're kind of looking up into this area a little bit seen some of the tear duct in here and a little bit that area maybe and again some of the top plane of the lower lid now I've got this eye like really angled out right now but we can come in there and adjust that pretty quickly and just kind of round this out a little bit It'll look a little bit more eye-like pretty quick. Right, and then again, we get that same kind of fold that the lid is tucking up underneath. Kind of wrapping up around here. Not bad. And then from there, we just got to figure out kind of where the the irises are going to sit inside of here. Right? And they're kind of sitting like off to the side. Like she's, her head's looking one way and then her eyes are kind of looking back towards us a little bit, which is always a challenge. But they're just going to sit basically right in here and about here. I just kind of take my best guess at first and then just kind of lock them in place. Right, about like that. This one's looking way over this way. And over this way. Olivia has returned. Hello. Oh, well, Faith and Alex are here. They are. Oh, yeah, the one time you're not here. Yeah. Well, I'm here now. Are they still here? Really? Probably. Okay. Well, hello. They were here a minute ago. Olivia says hi. She has returned. Oh, Louisa's here. Everybody's here. Stephen's here. Mark's here. We've got them all. I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry. Neither do I. Did you read all the questions yet? Do you want me to read any to you? Yeah, I've been reading them. Okay. Yeah. Hey, There's nice drawing. Thank you. Okay, so we get these irises on here, and they look a little bit odd right now. Partly I think that is coming from the fact that this tear duct looks a little bit weird. A 
that's okay. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to have some pupils kind of right here in the middle because she's looking right at us. Not like that. So kind of something like that. That's starting to look okay. Not for the best eyes I've ever drawn, but they they get the job done. You know, we got our nostril on here. Let's see what else we need. We're gonna need I don't know, maybe that's okay. Maybe what I need to do is snap a photo real quick. Okay, in fact, I think I'm going to do that real, just real fast. Won't be more than a minute. Just so we have some evidence of this stage. And it gives me more stuff to post. Oops, that's not what I need. That should be good. So let's do a little bit of shadow mapping and see if we can get like a good light and dark separation going on here. And uh, that is the plan. Alex. Look that you've been drawing with a very blunt, not sharpened Conte, as per a friend's idea. It has been really fun. That's good. That'll certainly build dexterity fast, man, because if they're not sharpened well, you can do everything you can with, with a well-sharpened pencil. It just takes much, much better dexterity to pull it off. And you'll probably get a lot of nice soft edges and stuff, would be my guess. Okay, so let's go in here and start looking for some shadow shapes and see if we can start breaking this thing down a little bit. Uh, starting with, well, we'll start with the, lighten this a little bit, up in the brow right here, right? So we get kind of a pretty clear brow shape that cuts in here, right? And it's going to cut right up along our eyebrow. And then what's interesting is it kind of does this. I think I'm going to simplify it. There's like a little split kind of right in there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's almost too detailed. I don't know if we actually need that. I'm going to kind of simplify it a little bit. Right, and then we get a little bit of shadow over here. Not a lot, just a little bit. In fact, you could even argue that this is maybe more of a dark half tone. I'm going to map it anyway, just because it's a very clear shape. Got a little bit of light showing through here. Uh, this kind of connects into here.
Now at this stage, you'll probably notice that I'm not like totally copying the reference much at all. It's, I'm mostly kind of just designing things as I go here. Harder edge. All right, so see if we can just design a super, super clear shadow shape that we can put in there. You know, see if we can lighten some of our construction lines, get a little bit of shadow down here, maybe. You know, over on this side, we're going to have a very clear shadow shape up along here. It's going to run, same thing, right across the brow right here, and then kind of back in a little bit, and then right across here. Now, this whole eye is basically in shadow. Like, there's a little bit of light on the lid and above it, but not very much. It is very dark. I'd be tempted to just push this whole eye into shadow. You know, maybe a little bit of shadow on the lid, lower lid right here. And then that shadow is going to cut across kind of that way, merge right into here. It's not bad, right? So then we're going to have separation between uh, the, the planes of the nose and see if we can figure out bigger nose as well. I think it needs to be just a little bit wider. Okay, so shadow is going to run right along that, that top and bottom and side plane separation, right? Like it's separating out the bottom plane. Kind of running up along this way. Runs up this direction down just a little bit, back along the nostril, and then kind of back up along this part of the nostril. And then we get a cast shadow from the nose down onto the face, All right, which is kind of coming out this direction a little bit. And down this way. All right, as it moves farther away from the object that's casting it, it gets softer. You know, so it's going to be a really hard edge up along here, and it's going to get softer back around up in here. And then this is, even though that's up near the nose, that's going to be softer too, because it's a little bit farther away from us than this part. You know, and so we can kind of play with those edges to kind of indicate different things and, and help show the viewer kind of where things are located based on our edge choice. Kind of locking these shapes down a little bit more. That seems pretty good. All right, and then we'll come in here. Now, this is tricky, and part of the reason I chose this piece of reference specifically was for this area right back out in here, because it looks really tough. 
And there's some things that I think we could do that will help it uh, be a little bit easier to draw. Uh, first, we have kind of this rhythm running kind of down through here, right, and kind of back around through here that we have to keep in mind. But also you'll notice that there's light. There's a little bit of light right in here, like kind of like that area. I'm going to ignore that. Right. It's so it's very dark and I don't know, like I think we can just push that in the shadow and it'll be just fine. So we're basically going to get a little bit of shadow here. It's going to kind of cut back up this direction and then we get a really soft shape along this cheekbone here. It's very, very soft. Get that cheekbone shape. And then I'm going to kind of simplify this area a little bit. But we don't want things to be too complicated. All right, then we're going to come in here and find a little bit of cast shadow. There's actually a cast shadow from the, the upper lip down onto the bottom lip is always a little bit tricky but it's basically coming out here up wrapping over and kind of back up this way and then it kind of cuts across and merges with our shadow right down around here which sits right underneath the bottom lip All right sits so right down in there and then we get shadow down in this section, right, which we have to be really careful with. It's nice and soft. A little bit of a harder edge underneath here, maybe. Running up along the chin. And again, there's like, it's tough to tell exactly what's in light and what's in shadow. So I'm going to take all of this section right in here and just push it into shadow. And just use that to kind of help complete this shape here. Right? And then we get a little bit of shadow on the chin. Right down around there. And so then what we need to do now is figure out how do we link this into our shadows over here. Right? So... First, we need, we're dealing with jaw shadows here, right? So they're going to be pretty soft, but then they need some variation too. And her, her jaw, it's fairly angular, right? Like it's not like the softest, roundest jaw ever, but we still need to push some variation in there, right? So I'm going to make it really soft back up in here and then a little more firm, like right down in here. I think that'll help. Just make this really soft as it kind of rolls into shadow. And then it's going to get more firm as it kind of links into there. Nice little shape to the bottom there. And what's tough is she's got something wrapped around her neck. I think she was just wearing like a 
robe or something. I don't remember what that is exactly, but we can't see her neck, so we can't really see the shadow on it. So we basically have to invent one. I mean, we can see a little bit of it, but I didn't draw this whole thing that she has. I just kind of drew a little bit of shoulder and I don't know, that seemed like a good way to vignette it. But I don't know, maybe it wasn't the best way. We need to figure out how to get some of this shadow in here. Find some of that compression that's occurring. And that's probably good enough to kind of imply that she's kind of looking back towards us a bit. You know, it would be good to get some ear on here, right? So we need a little bit of this ear. Ear is largely covered in hair, right? So we can get some of that hair up on here. Kind of wrapping around. Covered some of that slightly better ear shape here. It's going to fit somewhere right in there. Uh, remember, like, if we could see it, we would kind of break it into thirds, and that would kind of help guide where everything goes, but we can't see this top part, so we're going to have to guess a little bit. Tragus, anti tragus. Get like that kind of shape in there but then i'm going to simplify it and just turn it into shadow shapes right because that's just kind of like the guide and then we can come in and actually find our shapes for the shadows which we're going to set a little bit more like this shadow shape back up around here pops back out this way hard edge underneath it It's not bad. It's decent little shadow shapes for an ear, I think. If we were to go in and render that out, I think it would look more ear-like. Definitely. We also have a little bit of a shadow right here. I'm going to put it in. This might immediately need to be taken back out, but this might age her quite a bit. But I'm going to try it, right? She's got this like little secondary shadow shape. right back up in here I don't mind it I like it I think I'm gonna leave it Be really careful right because if you start putting in too much of this stuff it's gonna age her considerably like really fast and and not in a way where she'll look her age she'll suddenly look like like she's like 80 years old or something we don't really want that. 
a little bit of a shape right up in here maybe. bad no shadow on the temple like right out here and uh, it's not bad so there's the whole thing that's kind of going okay question now is what do we do with the hair we need to draw a little bit of it maybe like this section or just get some sort of indication on there just so we know what direction things are going and uh right and then we can kind of know like okay this hair kind of going off this direction this stuff's kind of going back this way You know, this stuff's all kind of wrapping back around that direction. Now, they, this hair is tough, right? So it's all kind of wrapping this way. go in that direction so we can turn this into something a little more hair like uh i don't know usually i just start with the general direction just so i know what's going on with the hair and then we can come in and start to add uh you know separate out our highlights a little bit and figure out exactly what's going on with the highlights in the hair and what's going on with and essentially we have one big highlight kind of running right in through here and so i'm going to just kind of define each side of that highlight with a very soft type edge. Notice keeping it relatively uneven as well. comes out from here. Notice so we've got a big highlight right in here. You know, then the question is, well, how do we turn this into hair? And I'm going to do a mix of things. One, add some hair indication to it, to each side a little bit. And then run some hair all the way through it, right? Make sure a couple of these go all the way through. That's 
that's basically it, right? Then the rest of it just gets filled in. Don't see how much of a highlight over on this side. It's mostly just right here. That's pretty much it. I wasn't going to like render a bunch of stuff tonight. And also, since it's just me, uh, I was going to keep this a little bit shorter. Instead of two hours, I was just going to do one hour. Unless anybody has any questions. Let's see here. Mm, how could I draw a person looking down? It's a good question. Um, essentially, if you want to draw a person looking down, you have to kind of think of the head almost as either a box or a cylinder and figure out what happens when you tilt that box or a cylinder. Oops. So say if we're looking at someone kind of straight on here. You know, we're looking at a box, like basically is straight on. I mean, it's turned a little bit, but you know, there's our box. Not the best box, but it's okay. Uh, so what we have to think about right now is, you know, here's our center line down the middle and our thirds kind of looking something like this, right? And we have to think about how those all wrap around the box in three dimensions, right? So then if you want to tilt a head up or down, what you're doing basically is tilting the box one way or the other. You know, kind of tilting the box this way or tilting the box Uh, let's see if we're going down. Spaced out here for a second. You know, here we tilted the box down, right? So here we took it, we tilted it back. Here we took it, we tilted it forward. Uh, but specific things happen as we do this, right? So now our center lines look like this and like this. But notice now when we break it into thirds, right? Suddenly our lines are wrapping differently, right? Differently than they were here. Now when we break this one into thirds, now it's going to look like, like this, right? So essentially, if when the head tilts back or forward, what's going to happen is, say, if the ear, right, it sits in this middle third right here, you know, and our, our ear sits right about there, then notice what happens, right? If the head tilts back, the ear drops down lower. The corner of the draw, jaw will drop down lower. If the head tilts forward, now the ear is going to be sitting higher. Right, and the tip of or the uh, corner of the jaw is also going to sit higher, and then the tip of the nose is going to change as well, right? So if we think about it, you know, on this one, 
Our nose is just kind of dropping straight down, connecting right about here, right? On this one now, our nose is kind of coming out. And connecting like that. Like now it's tilted back and we're seeing the tip of the nose way higher. You know, on this one, now since it's looking down, suddenly, the tip of the nose now is lower than our third line, right? So keeping track of those things, the ear, the tip of the nose, the corner of the jaw, are we seeing the bottom plane of the jaw or are we not seeing the bottom plane of the jaw, right? All those things play a role in designing the head that we're either looking up at or down at. And so the end result then, and you, this works as a cylinder as well, right? Like we can actually come in here and find the same thing with a cylinder. Right, if you think about maybe looking down at a cylinder or looking up, I think it's looking up at a cylinder. You know, kind of like that. There we go. It's a little better. Right? And we see the same, same thing, right? So say here's our center line here, our center line here, right? If we were to break this space into thirds, it would be equal to breaking this space into thirds. Right, same thing over here, this space is broken into thirds. Right, kind of like that. And then our lines now are going to start there and wrap around. Same thing here, now it goes this way. Right, kind of like that. But notice the same thing's happening, where if this is our brow line, and this is our nose line, and this is our chin, right? The ear now sits a lot higher, right? Because the head, again, is tilted down. You know, in this case, if this is our brow line, this is our nose line, now the ear is like way down here, right? Because it's tilted back. And then what's tough is taking this, because usually if you, I show this to someone, they're like, oh, yeah, that makes total sense. And what's tough, though, then is getting this to work on an actual head, right? Because a head isn't a cylinder and it's not a box. It's actually way more complicated. So you show it as a cylinder in a box and as a concept, it works well. and People understand it usually. Uh, but then when you try and draw it as a head, it works not, not as well. It's really hard. because you kind of have to know how the shape of the head changes, right? So one of the things I'll think about is what's going on with the cranial mass of the head, right? So if a person tilts their head down, that cranial mass shape is also going to tilt down, right? And so the reason for that is because as the head tilts down, we're seeing more of the top of the head. Right, and then we kind of get this sort of shape. The whole head becomes like an elongated shape. Kind of like that when we're looking down at it. You know, and then suddenly our hairline is like way down here. You know, and then our jawline is like way up here. You know, and then we get our brow line, nose line, right? They're wrapping up this direction to our ear, right? Remember, our ear is sitting really high. You know, and then remember what happens is then we have to come in here and find kind of 
kind of where those eye sockets sit. But then keep in mind now that our nose is going to drop, the tip of the nose will drop down below that line. Right? Kind of like that. And then... And kind of piece the rest of it together. I don't know. This is a terrible head. So something like that. But that's kind of like a head that we'd be looking down at versus one that, you know, we'd be looking up at. You kind of go the other direction with it. And we'd be able to see more of the bottom plane of the jaw and things like that. Anyway, that's my explanation. This isn't the best down tilted head ever, but. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I don't know why I'm drawing that here. Anyway, that's pretty much the end. So I don't think we need to do too much more than this. This is this is the drawing. Also, I've been thinking of running a class that would deal with up and down tilts and we just draw a bunch of like up and down tilt type heads. If anybody's interested in that, I've been thinking about running one. Maybe next term. I don't know. Cool. Anyway, this is it. This is the end. I'm going to drink a little bit more of this delicious Coca-Cola and then I'm going to go eat some dinner. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Bye. Guess now I gotta go hit the button. Forgot there's only one of me.